So even if you're extroverted, like if you don't have the courage to pursue your dream, then that's not necessarily a confident person, right? It doesn't matter whether you're introverted, extroverted. To me, confident is pursuing your dream because on a deeper level, you know that whatever you desire is meant for you, which is why you desired it in the first place. Welcome to Find Joy with Joanne podcast. I am your host, the confidence and visibility queen, Joanne Chan. I am a self-made entrepreneur who went from a nobody to receiving an outstanding leadership award on stage in Dubai and named as a successful person in my home country and speaking on stages all over the world, both virtually and in person. Now, I am on a mission to share what I have learned and what I have done to build my brand and business from scratch and to empower other coaches, leaders, and entrepreneurs do the same to help you build your confidence, visibility, and authority to make an impact in the world with the meaningful work that you do. Whether you are new to the business world or feeling unsure about public visibility or you want to be seen and heard in a way that doesn't feel icky but authentic to you, my signature mentorship program, Confident Visibility and Authority Accelerator, is designed to help coaches, consultants, leaders, entrepreneurs, aspiring speakers to overcome visibility fear, to confidently brand themselves and set themselves up as the authority in their industry. You will learn my tested roadmap that is not one size fits all that supports many business models so you can become visible in the world in your own unique way and show up as the confident entrepreneur you have always dreamed about becoming. Our mentorship weaves together personal development, alignment practices, and modern business strategies. You will do the inner work, strategic development work, energetic work, and get implementation support to clear any blocks in order to up-level your visibility, confidence, and authority to work with more clients and to attract more opportunities. To learn more about the program and see if you are a perfect fit, visit the link www.joyanchan.com forward slash CVAA. Again, that is www.joyanchan.co forward slash CVAA. You can also find the link in the show notes below. And every Wednesdays, we are giving you access to the world's best and brightest minds of business in their fields on our show every Wednesday. Listen in as these leaders impart their wisdoms, inspiration, and stories to empower you to live and lead a life with joy. Without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Joining us today is a proud introvert on a mission to help women break barriers by honoring their introvert and nature instead of trying to overcome it. Through guided coaching sessions, she gives women the tools to embrace the reserve, fun, and both sides of themselves in order to become authentic leaders, build meaningful connections, and spark new interests. She envisions women around the world shedding disempowering beliefs about who introverts can't and cannot be. So she's here today to empower you to live confidently and freely in your own introversion nature. So guys, help me in welcoming the proud introvert, Dania de la Cruz. This episode is sponsored by Get the Law of Attraction. If you have been listening to this podcast, you will know that I am a big believer of the universe and the law of attraction. Get the Law of Attraction is a spiritual and inspirational company that gives you something really good like chocolate chip cookies to feed your soul and your mind every single day. They provide daily Instagram posts and reels on the universe, gratitude, spirituality for your headache life. They also have an educational course on the Law of Attraction and Gratitude Journal and their links are in the show notes below. Go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up to get $25 off. Hi, JOYAN, and thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here with you. Awesome. I can't wait to hear your story because when I was doing research, you know, you, you spent years desperately wanted to be more confident and felt introversion is like a flaw that you needed to fix, but you didn't know how. And I love the fact that you actually stepped outside of a comfort zone. You took acting classes, dance classes, improv, and even modeling to challenge yourself and want to be, become more confident. And, but nothing, nothing drastic happened, as you said. So can you talk to us about that, like that journey? Yeah, exactly. So since I was little, since like elementary, middle school and high school, I was always very reserved and quiet. And during um, parent teacher conferences, 
the teachers would tell my parents, you know, that I was a good student, but that I needed to, you know, speak up more and be more like participate more. And um, in high school, like I remember seeing other people when they gave class presentations, they looked so confident or they were like in extra curricular activities, whether it was like sports or cheer or whatever other activity it was. And they just had this confidence that I wish I had, um, but I didn't. And I'm like, oh, if only I could be like them, then I would feel more confident. So then when I went on to college, I joined a club, like a volunteer club. And it was like a volunteer slash social club. And I did other things to try to help me increase my confidence. But I didn't feel that helped as much as I hoped it did. And then even after college, I did take, you know, acting classes or improv, not because I wanted to be like a professional actress or anything like that. It was just like, okay, how can I be more confident? Like maybe if I get out of my comfort zone and I do these acting classes, this dance modeling, it's going to help me get the confidence that I was finally, you know, I've been looking for all along and maybe this will help me finally get it. But then I realized like, even though I was taking all those classes, which I would have thought like, you know, oh, if I'm doing acting, like it would help me. And even like improv people would, I remember one time someone said, um, oh, if you want to increase your confidence, you can take an improv class and that's definitely going to help. Like almost like it's guaranteed to help you improve your confidence. So I was doing things that people were saying um, would definitely help. But even though I was doing them, I felt they somewhat helped. I'm not saying they didn't help at all, but I still felt like there was something missing. Like I, I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought, well, maybe I just need to take more classes or maybe I didn't take the right classes. Um, and I would just keep on trying to do more and more because I'm like, well, this isn't working. So I have to try harder and <laughs> try more. Um, but that still wasn't doing it. And it wasn't until later on when I started doing more of the self-love work and diving into my spirituality and knowing who I am on a deeper level that I started to truly like embrace who I was. And then I realized like, oh, it wasn't even so much that I wanted to uh, have to, I didn't, it wasn't about changing my introversion or getting rid of it it was just embracing who I was rather than thinking that something's wrong with me and I need to fix myself so that I could be who I wanted to be um, but it did take um definitely it was something that happened over time and again it wasn't until I did that like more inner spiritual like work that then or started my spiritual journey and did the inner work that I found like what I was um you know, what I had been wanting, but I didn't know that's what I wanted. Mm, that's beautiful. So what was the self-love work that you did? If you could share with us, what did you do? Yeah, so I just um started um reading like um articles or watching videos about people who were more like on like spiritual. Um, So they would talk about like who we are as like, divine beings like eternal beings divine beings and like I started to see like all these um limiting um beliefs that I had that weren't serving me like oh like I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or things like that that I started to become aware that I had been holding on to these beliefs for such a long time and thinking that if I was like someone else, like if I was more extroverted or if I was someone else, then I would finally feel good about myself. But when I did the self-love work, it was really about learning to um, embrace who I was and seeing myself that it's like, no, you know, if we all here and we are all different, we're not all meant to be the same, <laughs> right? It's like, not everyone's going to have the personality and that's okay. And actually now I see it like, I'm happy we don't all have the same personality because if we did, you know, it's kind of nice. Like if you go somewhere, different people have different personalities and each person 
as they are, they bring something to the table and it's kind of ha- nice to have those different personalities. But, you know, before I wouldn't see that and I thought like I really needed to change my personality in order to feel good about myself. I, uh, that's so true you mentioned about that. Imagine if everyone on... It's, if everyone is like a confident, you know, extra order, then this world, I, I think it's, it's going to be so weird. Like whenever you go, you just meet people who are extra order, you know, uh, confident, right? I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want that. So it's about, you know, like balance. We talk about best spirituality. It's all about balance, right? You have yin and yang. You have feminine energy and masculine energy. So again, we have extra versions and we have introversion if, both are needed. Um, so when did you realize, because you said that many introverts, they see introversion as a limitation, but you said it's not something that you need to overcome. So can you explain to us why? Why it's not something that we have to overcome? Not me, but yeah, you know, people who are introverts. Yeah, so the reason why um, it's not something you need to overcome it because if you see it through that perspective like oh I'm introverted this is a flaw that I have it's something I need to fix about myself you're seeing yourself through the lens that there is something wrong with you and when you think there's something wrong with you you're not going to feel good about who you are because you're always going to be thinking well there's something wrong so I need to change something about myself fix something about myself so I could finally you know be Um, the ideal version of me Um, but it's not a limitation because really there are a ton of introverts out there who are very successful in various industries and you know their introverted introversion didn't stop them from doing whatever it may be whether it's acting or singing or speaking or um, doing gymnastics anything you can think of Um, there's a lot of introverts in the world um so it's not a limitation to be introverted but the it feels like a limitation when you perceive it that way Um, because if you think that it is a limitation then you're always going to see it as a limitation and it's going to show up in your life in a way that blocks you or that makes you feel like it is something that is a flaw. So I think it's important to change that perception instead of seeing it as a limitation, seeing it as something that can be powerful and helpful because actually it can. So for example, if you are um, quiet, that's not a limitation. You could be quiet and that's how you recharge. And maybe when you're alone, that's, let's say you're a um, writer, maybe that's when, when you're alone, that's when your ideas come to you that you're writing and that um, being in solitude gives you the opportunity or the space for you to be able to be your most creative self. So it's not a limitation, unless, of course, you perceive it that way, then it will be. Yes, I totally agree, because it's how you see yourself. If you keep saying that I am an introvert, it's just a label. I, 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 this is how I see it. It's just a label, because the word they attach to I am, like, even if you say, I'm shy, I'm quiet, I'm introverted, I'm this, I'm that, you will start to show up as the person that you just described. You are, you know, it's like you, you, put, you put on these labels on yourself. And like you said, if it's, um, it's something that you see as a limitation, it always limit you whenever you go, whatever you do. So that's how I see it. It's just a label. Like people who say they are, they are depressed, if they keep saying that I'm depressed, I'm depressed, you become more and more depressed, you know? Because the word that we attach to I am is so powerful. That is how you define yourself. That is, that is your own definition of who you are, right? And personally, I am, as you know, you should be able to tell that I'm quite in- extraordinary, but I do love my personal time. I need my me time a lot, like really a lot. So I'm, I think I'm like, in between, you know, I'm extraordinary. I can be, I can hang out with people, like have a great time, but also I need to recharge. And how I do that, I need to be alone. So we have to embrace both sides of ourselves and this, you know, like you said, um, beautifully. So, and I love one of your fun fact. You have a lot, but this one I really I love the most. In high school, you won the award for being the shyest girl, but you didn't attend the award ceremony because you were too shy. <laughs> really? Is that true? Yeah. 
Yeah, that is true. Like at that time, um, yeah, I was really shy and I didn't want to go to parties. I mean, somehow I ended up going to prom, but for that reason, that award ceremony, like I just didn't want to know. I don't know. Maybe I had a feeling I was going to win that. Award. I don't know what it was, but I didn't go. And then a friend afterwards, she told me like, hey, Danya, you won this award for being the shyest girl in my academy. And I was like, yeah, I kind of, it didn't surprise me that I won that because I knew that I was like the shyest one in my academy. But yeah, I, I didn't actually attend the <laughs> award ceremony. That was so funny. Yeah. And how did you become a coach? Because you are a coach now and you, you want to work with introverted young women. Why, why do you specifically want to help introverted young women? Is there a reason behind it? Yeah. So, um, well, I'm an introvert. And like I said, I struggled with it for a long time and thinking that it was something I needed to fix. And for now, like there are a lot of people that are talking about introversions. I mean, there's books, videos, other coaches, teachers, people talking about introversion. And yet I still think that there's not enough people talking about introversion because I think introversion is still generally seen as something negative or like a flaw. And um, earlier, like how you mentioned, like label, it's about, you know, you're talking about labels. And yeah, I think that is important. Like, right, if you label yourself, um, and I think it's the relationship you have to um, the label. So let's say I call myself, like say I am introverted, but if my definition of introverted is, oh, I'm introverted. So that means I can't do what I want. It means I can't achieve my dreams. It means like I'm limited. And if that's the the way you see introversion, and then you're labeling yourself as an introvert, then yeah, that's definitely a problem because then you're just, you know, perpetuating that. But if you think like, like, oh, I'm an introvert, but that means I am powerful. That means I can do whatever I want. And there's really like no limitations to being an introvert. Then, you know, it's all about perception. Like as long as you see yourself in a positive um way, then that's what matters. So it's not even so much about the words. You, I mean, words do matter, but it's more so like the meaning, what, what those words imply to you, right? Because to you, the introverted might imply one thing, but to me, they might imply something else. So it's about what those words imply to you. But the reason I want to work with young women is because, um, like I said, I think sometimes there's not enough people talking about this. And I still think that introversion is seen as like a flaw. And I think it's important to address this when you're young or like, you know, because um, if you don't address this, you could go on living years and years with this as a limitation. And it could really have a negative effect in your life if you don't take the time to actually look at it from a different perspective. Um, so that's why I feel called. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. No, carry on. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no. Yeah, basically, yeah, that I'm just saying. And then as um, specifically, I want to work with women because, you know, um, not that men aren't introverted as well, but I think sometimes it can be like a, a little different, like in, um, you know, like a, the way it affects men or women. And it might be um, similar, but it's just because, you know, when I want to work with other women, it's kind of like helping my like younger self or what having the support that I wish I would have had. Like when I was taking all those, you know, acting or improv classes or whatever, I wish I would have had a coach who would have told me like, Hey, no, actually, you know what? You don't need to fix your introversion. And that would have been really powerful, but I didn't have anyone. I didn't hear anyone say that. So then I spent all these uh, time thinking that, Oh, I take this class, this class, this class. That's finally going to help me get rid of my problem or what I perceive as a problem. Um, so that's why I want to work with women to offer them a different perspective. Yeah, that is indeed powerful. I think I saw this quote. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes that I saw it quite often. It says, be the role model that you wish you used you had something like that so it's along the line with what you just said i can't remember as exactly what that sentence was but so you mentioned about definitions and so i want to know what does com what does being confident mean to you now so now okay so what it 
doesn't mean anymore. Like I said before, I thought confident meant being extroverted or being really loud or outgoing. And I thought that meant being confident. But now being confident means being committed to being the highest version of myself. Regardless of the circumstances, being committed to do and be what I want to do. So um, and that goes for anyone, you know, like let's say someone um, does want to be a singer and um, it doesn't matter if they're introverted or extroverted, but if that person is committed to being a singer, no matter what happens, like let's say they want to go on a talent show and that's their dream, right? Um, so even if you're extroverted, like if you don't have the courage to pursue your dream, then that's not necessarily a confident person, right? It doesn't matter whether you're introverted, extroverted. To me, confident is pursuing your dream because on a deeper level, you know that whatever you desire is meant for you, which is why you desired it in the first place. Because if you're not pursuing your dream, then there's some belief in there that you think like that for some reason, oh, it's not possible for you or you're not worthy or for some reason it won't work out for you. But it's like, wait, like other people achieve their dreams. So, and we all have the ability. So then why wouldn't you as well, you know? So then, um, yeah, that's my definition. Just being able to um, commit to that higher version of you, the version of you who um, has, you know, who pursues their dreams and who is the person they want to be despite the challenges they might face like always committing to like yeah this is what's gonna happen and that'll just be it yeah that's absolutely true because no matter i you know whether you are extrovert or an introvert we all have fear we all have limiting beliefs about ourselves so you say so so right because yeah like i said we all have limiting beliefs. i also have limiting beliefs i also have fear i also have dreams that i I desires that I, you know, I was too scared to go after. So it's so important for people to know this, that everyone has fear, that everyone, everyone has limiting beliefs, right? And your job, our job is to find out what is our own limiting beliefs, what is our own fear, you know, and what's holding us back. And there's this sentence on your website that I love. It says, it's so powerful. It says, it's time to harness your quiet strength to become a force of nature. Like, wow. I was just like, wow. <laughs> so if someone, you know, is listening to this, they are unhappy with their introversion or they are comparing themselves to other confident people out there. They want to be more confident. They want to be like them, you know, those people they see on social media. What can they do? What is the first step? What does it look like to start feeling more empowered in who they are? Yeah, and this can um, take on many shapes and forms. You know, there's different things that somebody can do. But for example, one thing that could be very simple to do is um, to look around and like whether it's Google or in your own life and look at examples of other successful introverts. So if someone is unhappy because they think, oh, since I'm an introvert, I can't do X, Y, Z. Well, but if you look at like... um, you know, other examples of people who are successful, then that kind of could start to change your belief, like kind of right away. It's like, oh, well, I thought I couldn't do this, but they're doing it and they're introverted. So then maybe then I can do it too. So that could be kind of like a quick way to kind of just get inspiration from other people because, you know, there's so many amazing human beings and why not get inspired from all the things that they're doing and then, let that be like, oh, well, they can do it, so I can do it as well. So that's one thing. But another thing um, someone can do if they are unhappy with their introversion is to maybe pick like one thing that they would like to do um, or they would like to achieve or that they feel they can achieve and start to take like a small step towards it. Um, So let's say they are unhappy because they feel like maybe they want to be more social or like they want to do some kind of um like I know for me um before I thought like oh I'm an introvert so I can't do um social dancing or something 
like that in the past. So let's say you do want to um, do a dance, for example, right? Um, well, maybe you can see like if you're too um, uncomfortable going to a class, maybe you could do an online class or like a one day workshop or something where you start getting that experience, but like in a way that's not as intimidating. I'm not saying like sign up for a dance competition immediately because right for some people, if, if you're like um, you're really uncomfortable and then you're forced to do something, then actually it might just be so far out of reach that you wouldn't even want to do it. But if you start taking a smaller step, like, oh, let me look up a local Um, dance workshop in my area just one day let me commit to that one day and then when you start doing that and maybe you go and you take the class and you're like oh wait this actually wasn't as bad as I thought I did it and then that can start to make you feel more confident um, because I think there's you know I think there is a lot of power in drawing inspiration from other people but at the same time until you experience something for yourself that's when I feel you're really going to make the bigger difference because you can look at other people and see like, oh, look, they're doing that. But then you could think, oh, well, that's just them. Or maybe there's something different about them, something they have that I don't have. And that's why they're able to do that, right? Because you could still <laughs> do that. But if you start doing it yourself, it's kind of like you're showing yourself that you are capable of doing it. And with that said, though, um, like back to the dance example, you could also... Um, make it like depending on where you at, you could make it a goal like, you know what, it doesn't matter if I go and I'm a great dancer, I'm a terrible dancer. My per like, I'm just going to be celebrate if as long as I show up and make that be a celebration. Because if you go to the dance class and then you do feel really uncomfortable or something and you might start thinking, oh, see, yeah, I am an introvert and that's why I can't do well in my dance class so then that's only going to perpetuate the belief so you have to do something but also keep in mind like taking a small step and keeping in mind where you are on your journey so that whatever you do it's a empowering step rather than something that reinforces like your belief that introversion is a problem that's so true because i personally i took dance dance classes before and i suck at it <laughs> so <laughs> I was so bad at dancing. I love it. And so you mentioned about socializing and meeting people. And I, I think this is one of the limitations that, one of the limitations for a lot of people, especially one of my friends. I remember she's she's very shy and quiet and reserved, the kind of, you know, shy girl. And she wanted to get into a relationship. Always. She's, yeah, she always wanted to have a boyfriend or you know, get into a relationship. And she just... She's just too shy. And I remember I brought her to a social event at a, like, um, what do you call that? Like those, you know, speed dating, <laughs> you know? And so I brought her there and she was so, she was just too shy to even say a word. So what would be your advice for people like my friends and other young woman lady out there, like who really want to maybe get into a relationship? Maybe not. I don't know. That depends, right? Or it's just like um socializing, networking. How do how do they start to open themselves up more in order to meet people, in order to, you know, build meaningful relationship? What would you what would you what would be your advice for that? All right. So since you mentioned the relationship, I do have some thoughts yeah. and then I'll say something about yes. like <laughs> in general. But actually, um I went to a tantric speed dating event one time and that's different from a regular speed dating event so a regular speed dating event it's like you're talking to someone and then you every like whatever five seven minutes you switch right so you're talking but the tantric speed dating was actually um different so that one is wasn't so much about um you talking with your partner it was sometimes more like an energetic or like physical connection with your partner so sometimes you might just be like um looking at your partner or you might be um, holding your partner. And of course, this is done in like a safe space with like a lot of participants. So, you know, it's in that space. Um, but the reason I think this potentially could be helpful for introverts is because if you are afraid of um, talking uh, or you get intimidated, this is like um, 
you don't actually talk as much like in a normal speed dating event. You actually connect with people um, energetically or physically. Um, I remember one time there was this like eye gazing exercises where you would just look at the participants and then move. I thought that was more intimidating to stare at people, mental eye contact. No? I guess it can. It just depends on the person. Like some people, they might be more afraid of speaking. I mean, yeah, I definitely see that. Okay. I guess I, I, I guess it can be very intimidating, but I guess I just thought like if someone doesn't want to talk and they just want to connect with someone, maybe it can be helpful. I mean, this won't work for every introvert, but who knows? Maybe for, for some people, like it can be um, helpful. But now for, for general, <laughs> in general, um, for like a social networking, not related to like a speed dating or that, it could just be, well, first, I think it's important to define like what you actually um, want because sometimes we are led to believe that, um, you know, that that quality is or quantity is better. Like, oh, if you network, you need to talk with everyone out there. But that's not necessarily the, the truth. Like, as in that's not something that you have to do. Um, some people do want to do that and they naturally are drawn to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for others, like introverts, it's more so about meaningful connections rather than um, connecting with everyone. So if you go to a networking event and you have a goal like, okay, well, what what feels right for you? And you're like, okay, as long as I meet like two people or even like one person, but it's a really strong connection with that person, then to you, that could be, that could be your success, right? Whereas someone else, they might walk out with like 15 business cards <laughs> But maybe one person just walks out with like one card or with one connection. But if that one connection leads into like a, you know, you actually make an effort to stay connected with that person, then you can build like a really strong, meaningful connection. So it's not about thinking that you have to be the life of the party or the most talkative person at the networking event. It could just be like focusing on just one or starting out with one. And then if you feel called to do more, then you can. Because um, every in even every introvert is different, right? Not Like you might have five introverts, but they're each going to have want something different. So just because um, five people might be introverted doesn't mean that they all want like the exact same thing. So first, it's just about defining like, well, what... What do you really want? Not what you think you should want or what other people are doing and think, oh, well, this person uh, who is a successful, they have, you know, a hundred connections. So I need to also do that if I want to feel confident or successful. It's like, no, what does, what do you want to do? Like, what feels aligned with you? Like, what is your heart's desires? And then once you're clear on that, then you can um, take action based on what feels aligned with your heart. Mm. What if people, they are still really, they really want to be more confident. They really want to be more extroverted. And that is their heart's desire. So is it okay for them to, to work on their confidence? What would you say about that? Because earlier you mentioned, it, you know, you shouldn't compare yourself, you know, to others. You shouldn't compare yourself to other confident people you see out there. And you feel like you have to be, be more like them. But what if, Introvert, you know, people, they genuinely really want to become more confident, want to become more extroverted, talkative, whatever that you mentioned. I think there's no right or wrong. I think right thing is following your heart's desire. Like, I think you should honor all of your desires, whatever they are. So if you do desire to be uh, more talkative, yeah, you definitely go for it because that's what you're wanting to do and confident. Um, as for confident, it's just finding a way, being confident in your own way, as opposed to trying to be someone else's version of confidence. So yeah, it's, so it's not about um, not trying to be confident. I mean, I think everyone should should try to should want to be confident because, I mean, we are all here um, with a purpose, and 
we are a divine being, so we should all feel confident. So that definitely, if you want to be confident, I mean, for sure, do that. It's just the, the problem is when you're trying to be confident and thinking that it has to look a particular way. Um, that's the, the problem. And then as for talkative, like if you see someone else and you're like, oh, I really desire to be that talkative, like lean into your desire. And because I think two things can happen. One, like if you see someone who's talkative and um, like for me, like when I was on my journey and I wanted to be like that person who was very outgoing, as I started to love myself more, I realized that that's not what I actually wanted. I didn't actually want to be outgoing as I thought I did. What I just wanted was to really connect with my true self, but I didn't know. So that's the one the one thing that can happen that you might realize, like you think you want to be talkative, but you, then you might realize like, nah, that's not what I really wanted. What I really wanted was to just have more meaningful connections. But two, like, let's say you do want to be more talkative and you're like, yeah, that really is what I desire. Well, then go for that. Like start small. And if you do want to go to like a party or a social event and you would love to be able to talk to different people, um, then honor your desires. I would say always, whatever they are. So then, yeah, find a way to to do that, whether it's, um, you know, at a networking event or you could even go to like, let's say a volunteer event, like, I don't know, a pet shelter, for example, <laughs> and you go there and you start talking to other volunteers and there, if that's where you can start, if that's, let's say, where you feel comfortable and you start talking to people there and then you're going to feel more confident. And then when you go to other events, the more you do it, you're going to feel more, more and more comfortable doing it. So you'll naturally start talking to more and more people. And that's the, another thing that I think you shouldn't like force yourself. Like if you feel like you're really forcing yourself to do something, then allow it to come more naturally to you. But yeah, to answer your question, I think, um, yeah, if someone wants to be talkative, like, yeah, they should honor whatever their heart is telling them that they want to do. Yeah, yeah. I would say find out your passion first. If your passion is acting, then go take an acting class. If your passion is dancing, then take a dancing class, right? Find out what is your passion and start there. And I love that. That is so, so practical. And thank you so much for sharing. And it's been wonderful to have this conversation with you. Um, it's not, I don't have... I don't have guests who have ever talked about, you know, on this topic is so important. And, you know, my mission is also to help women leaders and, and coaches, entrepreneurs to become more confident, to become more authentic, to be who they really are, you know, to really start showing up authentically and confidently and share their voice, share their story, share their message, just like what you are doing here. And thank you so much for being here with us today. Is there anything, before we move on to our final part of the of the episode is there anything you really want to share or really want to talk about perhaps i didn't ask you or didn't let you um the only thing i would say is that um so we talked about being shy and being introverted but they're not necessarily the same thing and it is confusing right because sometimes they are used synonymously and it kind of um sounds like they're the same thing because a lot of time if i say i'm introverted people would say i'm saying like oh i'm shy because they think it's exact same thing but it's um not necessarily the same thing I mean depending on how you define <laughs> how you define it you know but um where the way I see it is we're like shy it's like you're afraid of um how you're perceived you're afraid of being judged whereas introverted you are um have like a preference for like solitude or you need to you draw energy by being alone that's how you recharge so um, you can be um, introverted, like you might be out with a lot of people and then you're like, okay, now I need to go home and recharge. But that doesn't mean that you're a shy person. And sometimes you can be a little bit of both. You can be like shy and introverted. Um, but yeah, I just want to say like, just because you're introverted doesn't necessarily mean that you're shy. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting to ponder. 
that shy, being shy is not exactly the same as being introverted. Very interesting. So, Daniel, we always end our show with final five rapid fire questions. I know there's a surprise, but don't worry about that. <laughs> Every question has to be answered in one word or one sentence maximum. <laughs> All right? Yes. It's, it's going to be fun. Oh, I guess they love these um, five questions. So I have a slightly different... So normally I ask my guests all this, the same questions, but for you, I have different questions, different set of questions for you. So number one, question number one, what is the best self-love advice that you have ever received? Um, we are the creators of our life. Beautiful. Second question, what is the worst self-love advice that you have ever received? Someone telling me that I shouldn't think of myself as an introvert because that's a part of my identity. So, Third question, if you could live your life all over again, what would you do differently? Instead of trying and working so hard, I would tap into my inner power more. I love that inner power. That is so powerful. If you have five minutes and the whole world was listening to you, what would you say? I would say, you know... Too shy to go on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I always just say that, you know, you have... Um, we all have multiple sides to us and we get to express all of them as we wish. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. I can't wait for you to speak to the whole world and the last question is what brings you joy music oh wow I haven't spoke about that do you play music any music instruments oh no I don't I don't play but I love listening to music like when I um, listen to music it really uplifts me and you know depending on my mood I might listen to like if I want to like dance to some like dance music or sometimes I just want to like softer music so it just gives me a lot of joy when I listen to music. Awesome. Thank you so much again for being here. And I'm sure a lot of people want to, want to get to know you more, want to work with you, want to connect with you. Where can I send people to you? Um, you can send them to my website. So splashesofthedate.com, splashes with an S. And there they can find information about like workshops, my coaching program. And it also has my contact information there. All right. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I hope you love this episode. Go follow Dania. Go to her website. I will put a link in the show notes below. Connect with her. Check out all the amazing things that she's doing. I know she's going to do some workshops in the future. Make sure you get yourself signed up and show up. And I'll put all her links in the show notes below. Again, if you want to learn more about what I do, you can go to my website, joyanchan.com and also follow me on Instagram at joyan.chan. We release new episodes every Wednesday. So if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss another amazing episode and i will always leave you the same way as i leave you every other episode show up the world needs you you need you thanks for listening and i wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead thanks again to our sponsor get the law of attraction follow them on instagram for daily spiritual enrichment and encouragement especially if your spiritual ice cream cone is melting a bit you will get a fresh scoop of your favorite flavor of spiritual encouragement and insights. Find Joy with Joanne listeners will get $25 off when you go to their website and use promo code Joyan J-O-Y-A-N, when you sign up for their Law of Attraction course and gratitude journal. Once again, that is Joyan J-O-Y-A-N, for $25 off, and their links are in the show notes below. Thank you again for tuning to Find Joy with Joy and Podcast. If you love and enjoy today's episode, you can help support this podcast in one of three ways. One, take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your IG story and tag me at joyan.chan so I can repost and connect with you. Two, share this podcast with a friend or family member. And three, leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts so we continue to grow and reach more listeners worldwide. And make sure you also subscribe so you don't miss out on any episode coming Wednesday. And my joyful friends, until next time, keep showing up. Success doesn't show up for you until you show up and pursue your own success. Again, thanks for being here and I will see you soon in the next episode.